Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us The entrance antiphon for St. Maximilian Kolbe, priest and martyr. Come, you blessed of my Father, says the Lord. Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for the least of my brethren, you did for me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brethren. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all you angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <laughs> Let us pray. O oh God, who filled the priest and martyr St. Maximilian Kolbe with the burning love for the Immaculate Virgin Mary and with zeal for souls and love of neighbor, graciously grant through his intercession that striving for your glory by eagerly serving others, we may be conformed even until death to your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, make known to Jerusalem her abominations. Thus says the Lord God to Jerusalem, By origin and birth, you are of the land of Canaan. Your father was an Amorite and your mother a Hittite. As for your birth, the day you were born, your navel cord was not cut. You were neither washed with water nor anointed, nor were you rubbed with salt, nor swathed in swaddling clothes. No one looked on you with pity or compassion to do any of these things for you. Rather, you were thrown out on the ground as something loathsome the day you were born. Then I passed by and saw you weltering in your blood. I said to you, live in your blood and grow like a plant in the field. You grew and developed. You came to the age of puberty. 
Your breasts were formed, your hair had grown, but you were still stark naked. Again I passed by you and saw that you were now old enough for love. So I spread the corner of my cloak over you to cover your nakedness. I swore an oath to you and entered into a covenant with you. You became mine, says the Lord God. Then I bathed you with water, washed away your blood, and anointed you with oil. I clothed you with an embroidered gown, put sandals of fine leather on your feet. I gave you a fine linen sash and silk robes to wear. I adorned you with jewelry. I put bracelets on your arms, a necklace about your neck, a ring in your nose, pendants in your ears, and a glorious diadem upon your head. Thus you were adorned with gold and silver. Your garments were of fine linen silk and embroidered cloth. Fine flour, honey, and oil were your food. You were exceedingly beautiful with the dignity of a queen. You were renowned among the nations for your beauty, perfect as it was because of my splendor which I had bestowed on you, says the Lord God. But you were captivated by your own beauty. You used your renown to make yourself a harlot, and you lavished your harlotry on every passerby whose own you became. Yet I will remember the covenant I made with you when you were a girl, and I will set up an everlasting covenant with you that you may remember and be covered with confusion, and that you may be utterly silenced for shame when I pardon you for all you have done, says the Lord God. The word of the Lord. You have turned from your anger. God indeed is my Savior. I am confident and unafraid. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my Savior. With joy you will draw water at the fountain of salvation. Give thanks to the Lord. Acclaim his name. Among the nations make known his deeds. Proclaim how exalted is his name. Sing praise to the Lord for his glorious achievement. Let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout with exaltation, O city of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Some Pharisees approached Jesus and tested him, saying, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any cause whatever? He said in reply, Have you not read that from the beginning the Creator made them male and female and said, for this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore what God has joined together man must not separate. They said to him, Then why did Moses command that the man give the woman a bill of divorce and dismiss her? He said to them, Because of the hardness of your hearts, Moses allowed you to divorce your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. I say to you, 
Whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage is unlawful, and marries another, commits adultery. His disciples said to him, If that is the case of a man with his wife, it is better not to marry. He answered, Not all can accept this word, but only those to whom that is granted. Some are incapable of marriage because they were born so. Some because they were made so by others. Some because they have renounced marriage for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Whoever can accept this ought to accept it. The Gospel of the Lord. Today on this feast of St. Maximilian Kolbe, I want to preach about a little bit about marriage and celibacy and how they complement each other because our Lord speaks about both and his original intention for marriage and also uh, sort of the gift of celibacy. You know, some people wouldn't look at it as a gift, but it is a gift to the church. It's a, a grace that God gives certain men and women uh, for the kingdom of God. You know, we all know the story of St. Maximilian Kolbe. You know, he was this uh, during the occupation of the Nazis. Uh, in Poland, he was a Franciscan friar who was working to, you know, propagate the faith through media. And, and while the, the religion was being attacked, he tried every means possible to keep things good. It's almost like the coronavirus thing, just putting things on YouTube back then, just putting everything out there to keep their faith alive. And uh, he, was, he was arrested, put into a concentration camp, and then he basically, uh, what happened was, uh, while he was in Auschwitz, uh, a man had escaped from prison, and so there was always, uh, not always, but the way they dealt with it is they would execute 10 people because of one guy escaped, 10 die. And so this, uh, a man who was married, uh, he started crying. He says, I have three children. And Maximilian Kolbe stepped out of the line, and he looked at the Nazi officer, and he says, I will, I will die in his place. And they asked, who are you? And he says, I'm a priest. And they put him in a starvation bunker with the other men, and he actually miraculously helped them I mean, they suffered a lot, but he kept their hopes alive. It was a very miraculous account, and he gave his life for another, the love of Christ. That being said, you know, he says, one of his quotes is, the cross is the school of love. And I think uh, we have to know that in every vocation, uh, whether it be marriage or priesthood, that it's based on the cross and that it's on true love. And Maximilian Colby showed that by the way he gave his life. You know, uh, we're having a couple marriages here in this parish, one this afternoon and one tomorrow, and I always emphasize the fact that the cross has to be central in a marriage, in a sacrifice, a will of self-denial, because that's what true love is. And you probably have heard about this town, I, I've talked about it, but there's a, a, there's a town in Croatia that since uh, 700 has never, ever had a divorce in the history of the country. It's an amazing fact. I mean, it's, you know, now a couple things about this is, you know, why is this? Um, part of it is their belief as the cross being the center of the marriage, Jesus being the center of the marriage. They're very sort of schooled in this. Now, Croatians by nature are tough people, but they also understand that marriage has ups and downs. And you see, our Lord tells the Pharisees, he says, in the beginning was not so. They understand that we were not called to hurt each other. In the beginning, Adam and Eve, they, they didn't manipulate each other, they didn't use each other, they loved each other. And then sin entered the world, and what happened is we have this domination that goes into relationships. We have the tendency to use other people or to manipulate a spouse. And the Lord says, no, I've come to redeem marriage and to give us, the good news is to give everyone the possibility to actually love your spouse. But it's, it comes at a cross, it comes at a cross of... The cross, it comes to the price of the cross. But anyway, in the Croatian marriage tradition, and when they come and uh, when the couples come from pre-Cana, the, they are told, he says, that they'll say, I found my ideal partner, and the priest will say, no, you found your cross. <laughs> a cross to be loved, to be carried, a cross not to be thrown away, but to cher be cherished. And in the ritual, when they get married, and a, a lot of people, a lot of young couples are starting to do this, even here in the in the in our Latin church, when I say that, the, you know, as we do it here as Roman Catholics in the Western tradition, is they hold a crucifix during their vows and they look at the crucifix and not the person that they're marrying. And um, 
And so after they say their vows, they kiss the cross. And then when on their honeymoon, they place the cross, the crucifix, over their bed. And the tradition is they pray in front of the cross that they never give up on each other. That they love in the dimension that Christ loves, his church. Right? And so it's a beautiful thing, and that's why they don't get divorced, is they realize that marriage is for better or for worse. You know, uh, today there will be a, uh, an, a solemn high mass. I don't know if you that is a Latin mass, and it's a lot of music, and the couple wants to do it, and then I can't. It's very complicated. So Father Tom LaHood is doing it. It's very beautiful. But in that, they read the same homily at every marriage. There used to be, there's an instruction that they would give the couples. And uh, I just want to read a part of it about the, the idea of the cross, but they would tell the couple, this union is most serious. It will bind you together for life in a relationship so close and so intimate that it will influence and direct your entire future from this day forward. That future with its hopes and disappointments, its successes and failures, its pleasures and pains, joys and sorrows is hidden from your eyes. You know that these elements are mingled in every life and you are expected in your own. And yet, not knowing what is before you, you take each other for better or for worse. And that was sort of the idea that, look, there's an adventure, but there's going to be some pain. And just like uh, Maximilian Colby. And, and I think, too, is, you know, the idea of celibacy. You know, like people mock this so much today. And, uh, and you can't understand celibacy unless you understand what, what it stands for. Is that a man or a woman, a woman who becomes a sister, when she marries Christ and she forsakes a good marriage, a woman to a man, that's the good, for something greater, which is spiritual fruit. She becomes, in essence, a spiritual mother. And many of you who remember having sisters or nuns in your classroom, they were kind of like your spiritual moms. They raised you. They taught you. They nurtured your faith. And they brought forth spiritual fruit. And I think one thing we need in the church again is we need nuns again. We need sisters again. There's a huge, huge loss when we don't have these beautiful women teaching the kids. It was a big, and I think the reason that we don't have them is they took their habits off and they just wanted to be like everyone else. But there wasn't that sign that I'm different. I've sacrificed marriage for something greater out of love for you. But the same is true with celibacy for a priest. And if a priest isn't celibate or doesn't live it well, he harms his church. But if a priest lives it well, you know, gives his body to the church as a sacrifice, embracing the cross, it bears much fruit. And the priest experiences what? Spiritual fatherhood. He actually has a lot of children. Not physical children, but what? But spiritual children. And Maximilian Kolbe, when he died, he left a whole bunch of spiritual children that followed him because of his sacrifice. And so what is impossible for man, for man is possible for God. And so today we kind of, uh, you know, meditate on these things. And that they're both gifts. Marriage is a gift. It's a beautiful gift. And those who mock it don't see what it really is. But so is celibacy. And our Lord says this. He says, not all can accept this word, but only to those who are granted. And he said this, some because they have renounced marriage for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Right? And so he says that some of you, I'll give a gift to celibacy, that you can build up the kingdom. And some of you will be married. And I also, if you ask me, I'll give you the grace to stay married and to love your spouse until death do you part. And now we bring our petitions to the Lord. That the church may be strong in her doctrine on the sanctity of marriage, helping her children to work through the problems of close relationships without recourse to the escape of easy divorce. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, I pray. That modern society may rediscover the value of strong families, may build up a culture that respects life in all its stages, and may support traditional marriage. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, I pray. That we may come to appreciate all that God has done for each soul as his dearly beloved bride, giving him our complete faithfulness and grateful devotion, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who labor under a burden of sorrow or pain, that through the power of loving intercession, they may draw water with joy at the fountain of salvation and healing, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for the intentions of Tyler Rehovich, for which this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who have gone before us, mark the sign of faith that God may set up, set up with them an everlasting covenant, pardoning and purifying them to be welcomed into his kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We turn to Our Lady on this feast of St. Maximilian Colby and ask for her powerful intercession as together we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And we ask all these things through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. <laughs> Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands through the praise and glory of his name. For our good and good of all his holy church. We present our oblations to you, O Lord, humbly praying that we may learn from the example of St. Maximilian to offer our lives to you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you are glorified when your saints are praised, their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy you give ardor to their faith, to their endurance you grant firm resolve, and in their struggle the victory is yours, through Christ our Lord. Therefore all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the host of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim, Sanctus, Sanctus, Santos Dominus Deo Sabao, Pleni Sunt Celi et Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body of and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei, Mortem Tua, Annunciamus Domine, Et Tua, Resurrectione Confiteor, Donec Venidias. Therefore, o Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, His wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church in recognizing this sacrificial victim. By his death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Maximilian Kolbe, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Wilton, our Bishop, the order of bishops and all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. On your steady we told us back at Amundi, me say, Ray, Ray, oh, On your steady we told us back at Amundi, me say, Ray, Ray, oh, On your steady we told us back at Amundi, Dona no be Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Antiphon, greater love has no one than to lay down his life for his friends, says the Lord.
let us pray. <clears throat> we pray, O Lord, that renewed by the body and blood of your Son, we may be inflamed with the same fire of charity that St. Maximilian received from this holy banquet through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'll be available right after Mass for confessions and everyone wants to receive the sacrament and also just keep in uh, prayer today Sophie Adams who will be married today to her fiancé Jeremy and that they have a good holy uh, marriage. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke you from the And thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl about the world, seeking the world of souls. Amen. Amen.